Okay. So I recognize, uh, for example, Catherine Blaya, uh, French specialist of the problem of bullying. Uh, Bob Kravatsky, who is one of the, who is one of our students, working on uh, um, school dropout, and the others. <laughs> Okay, so I will present myself. I'm Eric de Barbieu. I am uh, 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 I work in university in Bordeaux, France, and I'm also the president of the International Observatory of the Racing School. It's the first time I make a conference in Second Life in our campus, even if I work with uh, Thomas since uh, one year, and it's very difficult for me because also I'm. My English is not too fluent, and I will try to, to make this presentation. There will be two presentations, one today about the uh, tips, uh, uh, commandments about uh, to, come, to fight against violence in school, uh, excellently. Um, what, are, what is school violence? Is frequency? Uh, what are the, the, the cause of school violence? It's mainly a theoretical point of view. Uh, next conference will be about action. What are the best um, efficiency, efficient strategies uh, to uh, fight against violence in school? Okay, so uh, I will have uh, perhaps. Um, 15 or 20 minutes, no more, perhaps less uh, to speak. If it is too, too hard for you, don't hesitate to say it, it is too hard and we couldn't understand and to ask some questions. I hope we could have um, a discussion uh, during uh, perhaps uh, half an hour, okay? The end of the session is uh, to um, what happen in um, Three p.m. Okay. So this conference is the main commandments for the fight against school violence in school. Against school violence. The project of this conference, and this conference is also a book I wrote uh, two years ago, is what research, what researchers agree to be the main um, topics on violence in school. What is really a consensus between researchers, not only researchers, researchers from France or from um, uh, England, uh, European countries or North American countries, but also from, for example, Latin America countries. Our International Observatory on Violence in Schools is really international. We are working with a lot of countries. Northern countries or southern countries in Africa, in uh, Latin America. For example, our next world conferences will take place in Mendoza, Argentina, uh, one month ago. And uh, uh, this is something something like a synthesis. This is for um, my very special point of view because. I have been invited in a lot of countries. For example, uh, I live in Brazil during uh, one year and working about school violence. And what appeared to me is that if school violence is really a, a world challenge, it's also a world challenge with uh, a very um, false ideas about school violence and also uh, a real challenge with um, from a politician point of view. It's why my first comments is the following. Be careful of manipulation. For example, in France, the topic of school violence had been used by politicians to be elected. And the topic of school violence 
is, for example, a topic for the extreme right and uh, parties who are saying school violence is due to immigrants. School violence is due to uh, uh, people coming from uh, Algeria, Maghreb, Maghrebian countries. And it's very dangerous from a politician point of view to assimilate school violence and immigration. Another example, when uh, you are working about school violence in every country, the problem of school violence is a problem with um, uh, the extreme violence, school shooting in uh, schools. But the problem of school shooting was used to um, make a very school are becoming very dangerous, for example. School are dangerous because boys and girls are more and more savage using uh, weapons in, uh, in schools. And you could see that it's like that in America. And school violence and little uh, violence uh, is very increasing in a dangerous way in the world. Be careful of manipulation with that. This figure, uh, I think you must make a zoom to, to, to read this, uh, this figure, is representing uh, all the school massacres uh, happen in the world between uh, the 60s and uh, two years ago. Okay, And as you could see, uh, these school massacres are not very uh, common. They are rather rare. In these figures, there are not massacres uh, in, for example, in Serbia or in Afghanistan or in uh, societies who are in war. But it's school violence, school massacres in uh, countries who are in peace. Of course, in America, for example, but also in Europe. There are 24 now, 24, between 24 and 28 school massacres who make two and 240 um, victims. And mainly the victims are children who are killed by adults. School massacres are not often the case um, by uh, students or pupils. Mainly it's because there is madness, but mainly there are very, very rare um, events. Of course there are serious events. Of course it's not to say there are not very uh, important to understand. But the problem of school violence is not mainly the problem of the very hard violence, not violence with weapons. It's mainly a problem with um, low violence. For example, about bullying, but not only bullying. And if you uh, study the stories of uh, school violence, even the hardest school violence, you could see that the uh, death in uh, schools in the world are, is not increasing. For example, in the United States of America, the number of pupils who are killed in a in school is decreasing between the, from, um, uh, starting from the, uh, the beginning of the uh, 90s. Uh, there were, uh, for example, between 15, 50 and uh, 80 dead uh, in uh, American school uh, at 20 years ago, and now there are 20, 22, and less than 20 um, since perhaps eight years. So school violence, lethal school violence, is in fact decreasing in America. And it's important to avoid the fantasma of the increasing of death by weapons in uh, school and especially in American schools. But if I said that, we could say, so, the problem of school violence is not so heavy. Perhaps it's not important to work on school violence. Perhaps it's only something who is very, something like um, um, a politician um, uh, idea and not the reality. But of course, the second commandment is take care. Don't avoid negation. School violence is perhaps not so heavy with uh, dead in schools, but it is uh, very important for the victims, but not with the most important violence. For example, I make a study in France. 
this table is based on uh, uh, an empiric study, an empirical study I made several years ago in France with uh, a sample of uh, more than 5,000 uh, students from secondary schools in France. And you could see at the top of the table that pupils, students, saying that they are not victims, victims from nothing. They have not been insulted, they have not been uh, uh, extorted, they have not been, um, for example, uh, um, knocked, uh, etc., uh, are only uh, something like 13 percent. Students saying they have been victims from one thing, mainly verbal victimization or a sim a simple uh, theft. Are one students, uh, uh, 25 students. True victimization, mainly insulted and a simple theft. There are 13 percent. And 20 percent, three victim, victim, victimizations. And there are two categories, two categories very, very important. Students answering that there have been victims from five or four types of victimization. And there is really a gap here. This 10 percent of students are in the uh, following questions of the questionnaire saying, my school is absolutely uh, impossible for me. The other students are bad. Teachers are bad. My life yeah. is bad. Everything is bad. And there are suffering of multi-victimization. And there are suffering of perhaps you could say, uh, say that is bullying. But for me, bullying is only part of the question. But the most important thing, and it's why we are thinking a lot of researchers, the main researcher about violence in school, is that to understand violence in school, you must study the repetition of violence in school. Repetitive violence is the most important. And you couldn't understand something of violence in school if you are not working on the repetition. We know very well the uh, consequences. Okay. Uh, I have a little problem with my computer, but now it's fine. Uh, so you can you can uh, could understand the, the consequences of repeated violent incidents, and the research is very um, impressive about that uh, that, that problem, and it's why we are working on that. Uh, we know that harassed victims are often anxious and depressive, with a loss of self-esteem, with physio physiological and psychological distress, and in extreme case. Victims are suicidal. Uh, you, you were speaking about the research with the Sagi Valley, for example, and there are a lot of very interesting research about that. The absence from school, harassment, and suicide are strongly associated. I will give you an example. In France, there is a new law, and a law which is uh, uh, which had been um, uh, voted by a very conservative party, and they said we must fight against absenteeism. And the problem is uh, absenteeism, absenteeism for this conservative party is that the fault of the parents. So we will cut all the um, social welfare for this family if their children are not at school, are not attempting school. And we always uh, remember to this party that take care because uh, certain research uh, are saying, I think, about our research in France, but also the research in Ireland uh, by Mona Homo, for example, that between 20 and 55 
percent of uh, absenteeist, chronical absenteeist, uh, are out of school because they, are, they fear violence, they fear harassment. And the way the uh, duty of authorities is not to punish the parents, but to protect the child. We know also that the role of victims remains frequent. Low self-esteem and much stronger depressive tendency in adults already harass in the youth. For example, we know that there is a clear link between um, uh, domestic violence and uh, former uh, bullying at school. Even if there are victims, and there are more victims of domestic violence, but even if there are um, uh, um, the aggressors who are more aggressive when there are parents, for example. Long-term effect is not only concerned victims. We know that uh, a lot of uh, bullies are already convicted of delinquency uh, after uh, when there are others. There is also an important role in school shootings. For example, a big research of the uh, uh, Federal Bureau of Investigation uh, shows that in uh, more than 17% seven, of cases of school shooting in the United States, the uh, school shooters have been bullied uh, and they came uh, into school to protect themselves then for revenge. And a big researcher and uh, um, a judge uh, in uh, America, which name is, uh, whose name is uh, uh, Geoffrey Canada, they said they are the main expert on school violence as the children because they are the main victims. And he, uh, he told about the, the case of weapons and uh, guns in schools uh, in the Bronx where he worked, uh, showing very, um, with a very impressive way uh, how this uh, um, uh, topic of school bullying is linked with uh, school shooting. My son's commandment is make a scientific diagnosis. It's true that to avoid the political manipulation, the exaggeration, but also to avoid the negation of victims, we must have a strong and very uh, scientific basis to, uh, to work on school violence. From a national point of view, from an international point of view, but also from a local point of view. The figures here is showing the results of uh, two types of uh, uh, manner to uh, take in, uh, to, take, to, to report school, uh, school violence. With uh, uh, five main uh, types of school violence. The first column is a column with a uh, Victimization survey in France where pupils report them, themselves their victimization. And the right column is about proportion of victims which in Signa. Signa is the official software who uh, count the fact of school violence known by the administration of education by the local authorities, but also national authorities. And for example, if you are asking to pupils, have you been extorted in your school? 6% of pupil students are saying, yes, I have been extorted. And if you report the case who are known by adults, by the administration, you could see that it's 0 0.3, 0, who are uh, known by the administration. For lower victimization, for example, insults, of course, you have a very important gap between the experience of victims and the reality who is known by adults and by administration. You could see that how could you manage a true and efficient policy 
if you don't know how many victims you have and from what types of victim victimization. If you think that there are very few victims, you will only take care of the main victims, victims from the uh, highest violence, victims by weapons, victims by very uh, strong physical violence, but you will forg forget a lot of victims who are victims of repetitive violence. Now, it is also the case in a school. I will give you an example. Some teachers, very young teachers, in a private primary school, asked to me to go in their school because there was a lot of, of problem of violence with uh, students. And they said, it's impossible. We couldn't live and work in this school because there is too much there. And, okay, I go to the school and uh, I hear the other teachers, older teachers, teachers who were in this, in this school since 10, 15, perhaps 20 years. And these older teachers said, no, sorry, there is no violence now. It's impossible. If there is violence in your classroom, it's because you are a too young teacher, you have you are not enough trained, you have not experience, you have not authority. So it's your fault if you have violence in your school. Who is right? As a the younger uh, teacher, as a the older teacher, I couldn't decide, as I couldn't decide. And so there was, there was a lot of conflicts between uh, the two types of uh, teachers. The work we made with the observatory was to make a gamization survey. And we... Sorry. We could see in this... Uh, We could see in this school that uh, the, young, the youngest teacher were right. Comparing this, this uh, school with the other primary schools where we have made a victimization survey, there were something like uh, 18 other schools. We could see that it was uh, the worst school in terms of victim victimization. Really, children were suffering and they were mainly suffering in the playground. Suffering because uh, the uh, oldest students take all the place of the student playground to play soccer, football. And uh, with a very, uh, um, a lot of knocking, a lot of fights in the playground. And uh, when we say in a meeting with all the teachers, we are sorry but your school is one of the worst school in all our sample of school. It was, of course, a shock for the uh, oldest teachers, but it, it was also, uh, also the opportunity to have a real uh, interesting meeting to say, how could we help the youngest teacher? How could we help the children? And it's very important to know really also from a local point of view to have a very good di diagnosis about violence in school. Another example from a national point of view is when uh, our minister said uh, to protect schools there is only one way, policemen and CCTV in schools. And when the victimization survey said, sorry, but mainly the violence is coming from the interior of the school, perpetrated by children on other children, you must have more pedagogical point of view with an improving of the training for your teacher, for example. It's why we have our commandment, I remember it, make a scientific diagnosis. The first commandment, just one cause, forget it. I'll let you read this uh, 
pictures. To cope with school violence is also to understand that we couldn't act, interact with only one cause, only one factor. Non-serious researchers are saying there is one cause, one and only one cause to school violence. From an electoral point of view, our president in France said that the fault of laxism that the fault of lack of authority by parents is so much complicated than, than this uh, very simplest uh, point of view. Of course, we know that there are risk and protection factors, personal factors, family factors, social environmental factors, but also contextual factors and school factors I will speak after. Personal factors, family factors, for example, and I, I go quick, we know that often people are saying parents are laxist, parents are, are in, unable now that their children are, uh, could obey them and obey to the, to, to the teachers. But the main risk factors, family risk factor, is too much authority, authoritarianism by uh, parents. We know that if you have a parents who is um, very authoritative, and especially if he, uh, he has violent uh, um, uh, interaction with his children, his children will, after that, be uh, a very authoritarian and uh, uh, with a very um, a bad way to manage with his own children. But between the, uh, uh, the children who is beaten by his father or his mother, and the uh, children becoming an adult and beaten is children, there is uh, a schoolmate. And this schoolmate could be violent because there is violence in his family. And I think that's a problem of violence. And even, even only uh, verbal violence in the family is perhaps more important than the problem of laxism, which is also, of course, a problem. And we know also that the, the third uh, parental style, who is very difficult, is the parental style is um, very um, different. Sometimes the parents are very, very, um, um, very hard. Sometimes they are very sweet. And what is the true adult, the bad or the gentle? And people don't know that. We know also that social environmental factors can be very important. It's not true in every country. But if I take the case of our own country in France, you could see that there is a very clear link between school violence and uh, social deprivative areas. For example, you could see that uh, there are a lot of victims of extortion everywhere, but there are more numerous if the, um, the area is uh, very deprived. It is exactly the same in another research we make in Chile with uh, Bajo is a very, very low uh, social condition. Uh, and uh, you could see that uh, that exactly the same. They see children are uh, knowing that there are more violence in very uh, social deprivated areas than in uh, high uh, classes uh, areas. But there are, of course, violence everywhere. And not every violence are linked up so clear be linked with uh, a social economical condition, but it's true with uh, a lot of violence. The fifth commandment, and the last I will show you uh, today, and the next uh, conference, uh, it will be uh, the uh, following commandments on action, uh, will be this uh, commandment, situate your work in a context. A very good book, from Ron Astor and Rani Ben uh, whose name is School Violence in Context, develops this point of view. And I think that in our uh, international observatory, the contextual approach of violence in schools is really one of the main approaches.
we think that violence is depending on the context. And I will present you two types of context. One historical and societal context, and one more uh, uh, local pedagogical context. Very quickly, evolution of school violence in France. You couldn't understand what is school violence in France if you, uh, if you don't understand what is uh, uh, the the evolution of our society, especially with our uh, um, pupil students, young voter coming from immigration. When we make the first victimization survey 20 years ago in France, we see that, for example, I will take the example of extortion. 6% of students said, I have been extorted by other students. And 4% of students said, I extort a friend. I am a perpetrator, okay? 10 years after, when we make the same studies in the same uh, schools, we see that there is a very big difference. We have always 6% uh, of students saying, I have been extorted, but we have 9% of students saying, I am an extorter. I am an aggressor. It means that, in fact, there are no more victims, but the first uh, topic, very important topic about the evolution of violence in school in France is that this violence is becoming more collective. For example, extorters are often five, six against one students. So it's rather uh, difficult for the victims because when we are more students, where we are in group, when you interact collectively, you are, you, you, you are more, uh, um, more hard with the victim, more harder with the victim. The second fact in France very interesting is that the increasing of victimization of teachers uh, is uh, very important. And it means that group of students are, are thinking that school violence is a, a, a problem of me, my group, against one teacher. And there is an anti-school violence in deprivated area with increasing influence. It's an example of school context, of context. If you must uh, uh, cope with school violence in France, you must cope with this type of violence. It's not a problem of bullying. It's not only a problem of peer-to-peer -peer violence, but also a problem of school representation by students, and especially with students coming from immigration. Second type of local context, of, of course, the effect of school type and the importance of local context. <clears throat> what we know very well is that, of course, there are a lot of factors who are explaining school violence. But we know that these factors are not uh, a determinism. We could act, we could cope with uh, school violence. It's possible from uh, a local uh, with the school effect. What we know very well in the international research is that if you have schools with the same types of um, population, for example, uh, minority students, for example, uh, um, uh, working class students, etc., etc., uh, you could have non violence Sometimes you have, sometimes you have not. You, s you know that the importance of the school is very, very high. For example, I take again the, the example of uh, extortion. We know in our study in France, but also in, in Brazil, for example, that you have some schools with same social condition, same demographic uh, condition, uh, for this school, and the same uh, uh, numbers of students, for example, etc. 
You know that some schools are, for example, two percent of students who are extorted, and the school just near this school where you are, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen percent of students who are extorted, and mainly is due to the way the school itself is managed, uh, and the uh, the two main important things we know by the research of, uh, for example, uh, Denise Godfredson in America, is that the two main uh, factors explaining school violence is, first, the uh, stability of the team, the adult staff. Uh, and uh, we know that uh, adult staff is not uh, very, um, is often not very, um, is, there is a lot of turnover of adults uh, in uh, schools when we, you are in deprivated areas, for example. The second uh, uh, risk factors is the way school is managed, and especially if this school is uh, a, a democracy, in fact, a democracy. It's more important that, for example, school uh, parental uh, um, risk factors, really the uh, pedagogical uh, way, uh, the pedagogical organization of school is more important, perhaps, than the social condition where the school is here. School condition, economical condition is very important, but the pedagogical condition is very important, and especially the way adults are managing each other uh, themselves. And it will be the, the basis where I will have, uh, during the next conferences, the uh, first uh, commandment for action. Just to show you that I will not uh, develop, we will have a discussion. The first of the uh, strategy is for me to avoid solitude. I thank you for your attention. I know it has been hard with my English, but thank you to be here. And I'm open to every question, or by typing, or by uh, speaking. It's perhaps better by typing because I am a little bit deaf, and sometimes it's very hard for me. Okay, thank you. Perhaps I could, uh, I could answer by speaking. In fact, in, in qualitative surveys, we have the same results. And during our first surveys, victims say that they have been victimized by one, only one, uh, other students. And it could be very hard. It could be something like uh, sadism, for example. And we know that uh, it's not uh, less heavy. But now, 
and not everywhere in France, but in, uh, especially in, in, in school in, in, with a very bad social condition. Uh, there is an increasing of what we, we call the, the name um, um, delinquency of exclusion, and it's a more collective delinquency. Victims, like aggressors, said, yes, there are several to uh, victimize us. And aggressors said, yes. And as they said that, when we have some focus group about that, said, yes, it's, it's true. When we, uh, we are aggressors, perpetrators, we are not only one, but we are the group of the strong men, the, the group of the strong students. And we are victimizing only the weak, the different. And for example, uh, there are several words in French. I will, I will tap to this, this, this word because it's uh, something like uh, uh, very popular language. Uh, it's buffone uh, in Italian. Uh, or uh, intello. Uh, and the, um, the good uh, uh, students is often also a victim because he is a good student. Okay. And it's not in every, every school, of course, but really there is a, um, a, a, a big change in violence in schools in France. And it's also due to the, the way that uh, France has a, a very uh, um, bad uh, political discourse about and debate about immigration, about violence of immigration, and uh, the way that the uh, uh, extreme right party uh, is uh, uh, increasing, increasing in a very dangerous, um, uh, from a very, very dangerous way in France, has, I'm sure of that, a very big influence on school violence. Yes, uh, it's it, it's very very strange because um, in the same way, where uh, even the, um, the Conservative Party. Uh, which is uh, on power now, when Nicolas Sarkozy uh, had a very uh, bad uh, way to, to manage with immigration. I have been charged by the Minister of Education to propose some uh, new uh, policies to um, prevent school violence, to prevent school bullying, and with a lot of very uh, progressive uh, new law, for example, uh, we, uh, uh, um, on dit interdire déjà? Uh, we, we have an interdiction about, uh, we forbid, thank you, it is, uh, it's true that you are French, uh, we forbid the uh, school exclusion for more than one week. And in fact, uh, we, we know that uh, there are a lot in France, a lot of school exclusion of one month and after one other month, and one other month, and so uh, the uh, students who are excluded from a temporary uh, exclusion are in fact really uh, excluded for uh, all their life by school, from school. And we have a new law now, it will be what uh, perhaps uh, next week, uh, where uh, the uh, school exclusion will be forbidden for more than eight, eight days. So we have some contradiction, very interesting contradiction, and uh, I, I try to uh, to help where I can help to have more um, efficient and democratic uh, uh, way to manage with uh, with surveillance. I, I think mainly then uh, politicians are uh, only uh, uh, or um, uh, uh, using surveillance to. Uh, play with the fear of the electors, or there are few, few with a very good will to change things, but there are really few. Uh, so 
course, it's not the case only in France. But. Yes, they were. They were. Well, I think we, uh, in, in Poland, uh, since five years, there is a very interesting uh, program and even public policy against school violence and school bullying uh, with a, a lot of funding by uh, the government but also by a private uh, society. Uh, for example, uh, the Orange Foundation. It's from uh, Cellular. And they have uh, 3,000 schools working on programs against uh, school violence. I will try to have the same thing in France. It would be hard, but I will try. Yes, that's good. <laughs> I have an, an important meeting uh, uh, where the second conference were uh, uh, scheduled um, next Tuesday. I have a meeting uh, with all the, uh, the most important uh, educative authorities in France uh, to present this, uh, this policy. So I must postpone to the uh, Wednesday uh, at 6 p.m. that uh, uh, Thomas will uh, with uh, have this in the website uh, for the current conference. It's why I must postpone. But it's a good uh, fact that I must postpone my second conference because it's a, it's a sign that we are taken in by a serious way to present to the most important uh, uh, educative authorities in France the program to, to cope with uh, school violence. And, uh, at the, here, at the end of, the, of the, this week, I am coming with the minister to Montréal, uh, in Quebec, uh, to, uh, to see some uh, alternative programs uh, to, to cope with school violence. And, of course, not a repressive program to cope with school violence. We'll see. The question or... Uh, Remarks? It's, it's very strange for my, my first conference in, on, on Second Life because we don't know if we have a real interaction or if the um, avatar uh, in the uh, armchairs are only um, uh, storing uh, because my conference was still on New Year's. So if it's the case, I beg your pardon. I, I, ha I always have the same feeling as well, Eric. It's very strange when you look in uh, kind of virtual faces. <laughs> you never know if <laughs> people are still, still there. Yeah. But uh, uh, my, my feeling, it was, it was very interesting. <laughs> you, you did the session in a, in a very good way. So thanks a lot. Thank, thank for you, Tom. Thank for you. So I think we will, we will stop this session because it was a, a one-hour session, and I hope to see you again uh, in a few days for the second session, where I will present you the uh, next commandments, and there will be term on action, mainly on action, uh, balance, training, uh, uh, etc. Yes? Well, I have uh, one short request before everyone leaves. Uh, I, would look, I would like to ask everyone to fill in a short evaluation questionnaire. Well, actually, it's not so short, but uh, it helps us a lot to, to find out what we can do better for, for other sessions. So every one of you who has not filled in the questionnaire so far, um, it would be great if you could fill it in. You can find it at the, at the URL that I just posted here. Can you read it? It's uh, www.unipark. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we, we can read it. We can read it. Okay, perfect. Okay. Thank you very much, and see you soon. Thank you.